Following the tradition of transferring games from the computer screen to the table, Fantasy Flight presents the old new adventure game The Witcher. Carol, the male witch who hides his drinking problem by sipping potions before every battle in a version with a better haircut than the computer game. Dantelion, the bard slash diplomat slash seducer who always gets in the way of the women so many times that makes every other player wish he was him, even the ladies. Speaking of ladies, Triss, the one sorceress in the realm who has access to a vast amount of spells but only one source of magical energy. It makes you wonder why he's still alive. And Thorin, Mr. Zigrin, with his band of dwarves. The Hobbit trilogy is a thing these days, we must have a band of dwarves at all costs, even if it makes even the most skillful player AP prone. Join the epic journey filled with curses, setbacks, monsters, and quests that take forever to complete. The objective is to complete three quests, so it takes three times an eternity. What's that? One to two hours game duration in the back of the box? Do not be fooled. Hours in this case stands for historical or unrecorded reference stories that might span a couple of centuries. Huge board, huge quest cards, huge variety of character skills, spells, and developments. But most of the times the tokens are not enough, so I will use these lentils. What's this? Extra action tokens, but no adequate number of common markers? You had one job, Fantasy Flight. Your character may travel, but if he travels too much, foul fate awaits. You may use Investigate, but one out of four times, setback awaits, or more foul fate. At least you may rest and develop your character or use a unique skill to make it through the game. A quest needs proof, and proof needs leads, and lead needs travel. So the average travel distance of a quest that needs two proofs is six leads at best, so a travel distance of six. Seems easy, yes? No. All the moments, setbacks, and foul fates are there to make it sure that the quest won't be finished so easily. Monsters are divided in three categories, bronze, silver, and gold. In order to make you feel that you won the bronze, silver or gold medal in the Monster Slaying Olympics. A monster usually requires a number of swords and seals to prevent it from wounding you, stealing you or cursing you. All players are running from one region to another and, as in all good racing games, it's very easy to slipstream your opponent when he slashes and hacks the monsters and you are right behind him. And travel to the land of sunshine and strawberry fields while he is burrowed in the muck of monsters and curses. To be fair, I have to mention that the game has its own mechanism to respond to monsters and curses in the areas you just passed, but just as in many notorious online MMOs, that doesn't happen right on time, and some other player might pass an area which is completely empty of encounters. The game has an innovative method of assigning woods. You block your own actions. Yes, that's right, you block your own available actions. Choosing from the four possible actions, except rest, which is the only action that cures wounds, you assign wounds to your actions and now you cannot perform them. Like you had a brain damage and somehow forgot how to investigate, but a night's rest somehow rewires your lost memories in your brain. It might be more thematic to name the wounds amnesia markers. Oh, a monster hit me, I forgot how to develop my skills, or, oh, a wolf bit me, can't use that special ability anymore that took me half a lifetime to learn, that reminds me of a cleric who couldn't heal or turn undead anymore because someone pulled the plug on his divine contact. Also, your actions may be cursed, that's even funnier than the wounds, because if you think about it, when rest is cursed, you fall asleep and nightmares are coming in the night in the form of sneak attacks, illness, bad weather, and when you wake up, you realize that the nightmare is true. Now that's thematic. I tried a simple strategy for my straightforward quests, meaning the ones requiring only one lead color. I went to a region yielding the same color as my quest, and also had an adjacent region yielding the same color as well. So, while going back and forth like a tennis ball, I could realize that something was wrong, and it wasn't the Earth's gravity. It was the rest of the players who were lucky during their investigations and ended up with more leads than me. The perfect plan was not so perfect, but it still feels like I was beaten by a bunch of lottery winners. Maybe I should join a bingo tournament. Another fun aspect of the game is side quests. Like Candle of the Grey, you get to set your main quest aside and head on a different endeavor to complete a small side quest that might give those extra victory points you need to win. Such side quests are easier, like go to a place, like a tourist, or give some more leads. That's convenient when the side quest needs a different color of leads than your main quest. You get to give the leads that were a dead weight. And another funny thing is the support quest. You have to go to a place another character is and complete his quest to gain 6 victory points while he gains only 3. Now, this makes me feel like the designer wanted the game to be 100% antagonistic, but while cooking the mechanics, a teaspoon of cooperative gameplay fell in the pot. That's okay, because without this trick you might feel the rest of the players are just generators of downtime. Come on, get it over with. With your little micromanagement issues and quest at the Dark Tower, my problems are bigger than yours. I have a bird to slay while traveling all the way from Wizima to Rivia thanks to this thinking side quest. All in all, Witcher is a good game of middle to easy complexity that might need this soundtrack. <laughs>